Hello and welcome back. This week I'm going to give you a DM's perspective on one of the most infamous creatures in the history of Dungeons and Dragons, the Tarrasque. The Tarrasque has garnered a reputation of essentially being the be-all, end-all, final boss, or the last stepping stone before your player characters ascend to godhood. This reputation was well deserved in earlier editions, but its 5th edition incarnation was neutered so poorly that the veterinarian responsible for the botched operation lost their license and the Tarrasque is now little more than an oversized wingless chicken. To back up my assertion that the Tarrasque is now a pile of hot garbage that you can barely call a challenge for a party of level 15, I'm going to be making comparisons to its version from 3.5 D&D, Pathfinder, and 5th edition. I've also found that the Tarrasque breaks 5th edition's own rules for monster creations. So let's start there. In the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's a chapter all about creating a monster to challenge your players. All of its rules are based off the expected challenge rating of the creature. The Tarrasque in 5th edition has a challenge rating of 30, the highest presented in the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Monster Manual. According to that same book, a monster of that particular challenge rating should have a few basic points of things that it should be able to do. To be fair, the Tarrasque does exceed many of them. Its armor class is significantly higher than 19, it can reliably hit someone with 27 or more AC, and its effective hit points is technically more than 4 digits. However, it falls short in one of the most important categories, damage per round which is essentially how it's able to defeat any given party of adventurers, even if it uses all three legendary actions to make attacks and lands every single one of its attacks, its expected damage per round is no more than 232 points of damage. The only way it can break the Dungeon Master's Guide own mark of 303 is to swallow a minimum of two creatures, which will take at least two rounds to do. Only then is the Tarrasque's damage output per round actually within the boundaries of the Dungeon Master's Guide own rules. Another area where the Tarrasque falls horribly short of 5th edition rules is in its save DC, both for its frightening presence and its grapple. At a minimum, the DMG suggests that any save DC for a creature of challenge to level 30 should be at least 23. Let's take a look at the Tarrasque save DC for its frightening presence, shall we? It's 17. Se wait, what? 17? Is that... Is that a typo? Nope, that's actually 17. That's less than an adult red dragon who is little more than half the Tarrasque challenge level. If you're going to tell me that a red dragon in the minimum age category for having a frightful presence is scarier to an adventurer than a beast called the Armageddon Engine, I'm going to have to ask you to put down the Hobbit and run for your life because the Tarrasque is coming to eat you. I also want to mention that the Tarrasque's Grapple DC also falls short of the Dungeon Master's Guide mark, but it technically follows the Monster Manual's rules, so it begrudgingly gets a passing score of D-. Moving on from the Dungeon Master's Guide, let's just take a look at the abilities the Tarrasque has in the Monster Manual itself. Its base stats are spectacular, garbage, fantastic, understandably trash, horrible, and questionably bad, in that exact order. To make up for this, it has a lot of saving throw proficiencies, right? Wrong. It has proficiencies with intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saves, but none of the physical stats. Most importantly, it lacks proficiency in dexterity saves, which is prone to a lot of abuse, but we'll get to that later. After its saving throws comes damage and condition immunities. The Tarrasque is immune to fire, poison, non-magical weapon attacks, the charmed condition, the frightened condition, paralysis, and the poisoned condition. These immunities are nothing to sneeze at. In particular, I do like 5th edition's complete and total immunity to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapon attacks. However, if you think you can show me a party above level 5 that doesn't have access to a plus 1 weapon, I'd have to ask two questions. What is the Tarrasque doing in Middle-earth, and where the hell is Gandalf? Moving on, the Tarrasque lacks proficiency in any skills whatsoever, which is actually quite typical of animals with 3 or less intelligence, unless you count bears, cats, dogs, crabs, frogs, hyenas, lions, or vultures as animals. As far as its senses go, it's actually a really good thing that it has blind sight to deal with invisible enemies who can't roll above a 10 for their stealth checks. Continuing on, the Tarrasque has 3 charges of legendary resistance, obviously. If it didn't, it wouldn't be worth the ink on the page it was printed. The Tarrasque also, quite obviously, has magic resistance. The incredibly bland stepchild of spell resistance from Pathfinder and 3rd edition. 
It also retains its reflective carapace from earlier editions, but with much less of a chance to actually reflect the spells back at its caster. It also has the Siege Monster ability, which is practically useless outside of its one intended use, but it fits the theme of the monster so it gets passed. Two things of note, however, are completely absent from the Tarasque's abilities. It has no ability to regenerate like it did in past editions, and its attacks are not magical. Let's start off addressing the less obvious problem. Why would it matter if the Tarasque's attacks are magical or not? Oh. That's why. A clay golem is immune to every single type of damage the Tarasque is capable of doing, and its attacks are magical, allowing it to bypass the Tarasque's immunity. So a clay golem can solo the Tarasque. Hmm. What about its other incredibly important ability, regeneration? In previous editions, the Tarasque was able to regenerate from a pile of ash, only to resume eating everything your players hold dear in an hour or less. It was also nearly impossible to permanently kill the Tarasque short of divine intervention or the spell's miracle or wish specifically. More importantly, these options would only work if the Tarasque was actually defeated first. The fact that it lacks this ability in 5th edition means that it's little more than an oversized Tyrannosaurus Rex. Before I move on to the next topic, I just want to mention one particular interesting detail about its reflective carapace ability and with the spells of 5th edition. Disintegrate and Finger of Death are spells that in previous edition the Tarasque was completely immune to since they were considered rays and thus required attack rolls. In 5th edition, there is no such caveat for these spells. They hit automatically without the need for an attack roll and simply force the target to make a saving throw or suffer damage. As such, it's completely possible for a wizard to disintegrate the Tarasque into a pile of ash after burning through its legendary resistances since the Tarasque isn't going to make most other dexterity saves otherwise. One of the final points I want to mention is how pitifully easy the Tarasque is to kill both for a full party of 20th level characters and for solo characters of level 17. We've already seen how a clay golem can solo a Tarasque, but what about players? Now, I said just barely that this beast can be soloed by a character of 17th level. This is true. Since the Tarasque no longer has ranged capabilities like it did in Pathfinder, it can be completely obliterated by a 17th level Tempest Cleric. The Cleric has the ability to fly at will, permanently keeping it out of the Tarasque's pathetic 10 to 20 foot range, and the Cleric can continually use the spell Call Lightning, which the Tarasque's reflective carapace does not affect. This also takes advantage of the Tarasque's garbage dexterity saves and gives any cleric worth their slots in spellcasting a reasonable chance to actually hit the Tarasque with every single bolt of lightning the spell is capable of creating. The cleric is never in any danger, the Tarasque dies because it can't regenerate, and Armageddon is put on hold until a dark god resurrects the Tarasque again. The Tarasque can also be easily bested by a 17th level Bladesinger, or for that matter, any wizard with a plus one weapon because of a spell in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, Invulnerability. Normally this spell is actually kind of bad because it's vulnerable to a third level spell called Dispel Magic, but unless there's a spellcaster on the same side as the Tarasque that would dispel invulnerability from whatever player happens to be attacking the Tarasque, that player is completely immune to everything the Tarasque can do, except maybe their pitiful DC 17 wisdom save on its frightful presence, but even that can only happen once. I think it goes without saying that the Tarasque as it's presented in the monster manual would be a laughably easy encounter for any part of 20th level since they have access to the exact same resources their lower level counterparts have, just with slightly bigger numbers. But fear not, for the Tarrasque can be made great through the use of one single phrase, homebrew. My suggestions, if any aspiring DM wants to have an epic battle between their players and the Tarrasque, include the following. At the very least, you have to give the Tarrasque its regeneration back and give it the ability to continue regenerating unless the players take extreme measures in making sure the Tarasque stays dead. If you want to take it a few steps further, consider making all of the Tarasque's attacks magical to avoid the Tarasque being murdered by a golem with less than a third of its challenge rating. I'd also think about giving it proficiency and dexterity saves just to make it a little bit harder for Tempest clerics to abuse the outdoors, or if you'd rather jump off the deep end and make the Tarasque's reflective carapace affect all types of spells, essentially making the Tarasque immune to magic, that would be a bit extreme, but still technically doable. You should also absolutely give the Tarasque some ranged capability. I feel this is one thing that Pathfinder did a lot better than Dungeons & Dragons. If the Tarasque has no ranged attack or some other way of dealing with enemies in three-dimensional space, then the ability to fly completely trivializes the encounter. There also needs to be some way for the Tarasque to deal with wizards who cast invulnerability. 
depending on the setting it could be divine intervention from a dark god, or the Tarasque's attacks could just force Spellcaster to make concentration saves. There's also the need to address the horrible save DC of the Tarasque's frightful presence. The grapple DC is fine, however I do wish to note that any rogue of 17th level or higher with expertise in acrobatics can't actually roll less than 27 as long as they have 20 dexterity, so you could consider buffing it up a little bit, but the save DC for the Frightful Presence is just absolute trash. It needs to be 23 minimum, at the very least. There's no rule that says you can't just set it to that. In fact, in the Dungeon Master's Guide, I'm pretty sure it says that directly. Anyway you slice it, the Tarrasque needs work unless you plan on pitting it against a party of level 12 or lower. I'll leave some links to reading material in the description to things that I've found that suggest other ways you could buff the Tarrasque, but if you can think of more creative ways to make such an infamous creature actually stand a chance against high level characters, let me know in the comments below. With that, I'll see you next week.